before we go ahead. ¿Cuánto te cobraron? 110 más tip. Perro, total. 130. ¿So ¿Cuánto quieres que te dé? Lo que quieras. Yo, ¿Ah? quieras. We love you. Love All right, thank God, thank God. Okay, what is going? Okay, hold on, hold on. give me a second, y'all. Give me a second. All right, anyways, you know how like we have commandments in the Bible, right? I want to see some beautiful faces, man. If y'all ain't got a dag on, you ain't got a. If you ain't got your camera on, you're playing yourself. If you're somebody that's like, oh. I don't want to build. I don't want to lead people. That's not my responsibility. Hey, hey, get off the call. <laughs> get off the call then. Go trade. Go look at some charts. Go back test. But this is not for you. Can I, can I be raw today? Can I be raw? Because I have to be raw. This book right here, tough money. <laughs> Leadership. Uh, anyways, drop a one if you know who Dan Pena is. Drop a one if you know who Dan motherfreaking Pena is. The <laughs> man. Ooh. I'm about to go in. Hold on. <laughs> Oh my God! All right, so let's let's get into it. I, I feel like I've been talking too much. I'm just excited. I'm grateful. So, guys, I got ten commandments for y'all, but it's not like the Bible. It's called Ten Commandments of Expective Leadership. Write that on your paper. Ten Commandments of Expective Leadership. Because I don't know about you guys. From the jump, as soon as I signed up, you can ask Joel the Savage. You can ask Tim Slumber. You can ask Brady. I said, look, I'm going for chairman. I'm going to go change lives. I'm going to feed people. And as a leader, you have to take you have to take all your problems off of you, and you have to focus on everybody else's problems on how you're gonna help feed them. You guys ever seen a wolf or the, that wolf pack picture where it's like ugh, like fifteen hundred wolves, like fifteen not fifteen hundred, goddamn, fifteen wolves that are like we're going at it. You got that one in the front. That's hey, that's how I feel. My team, let's go. All right, so we're gonna get into these commandments. Number one, this is basically like an affirmation or a declaration that you can make to yourself, all right? So I will tell no one, but I will expect much. Basically, you don't have to really tell people too, too much. You lead by example. You want your people to get on the calls, you get on the If you want your people to trade, you need to trade. If you want your people to go out here and prospect people, prospect people yourself, okay? But you do want to expect excellence out of everybody on your team. Number two, truth is the only thing that sets you free. Oh my. <laughs> y'all, I don't know about y'all, I'm a truth seeker. I'm tired of this, this stuff that they hide against us. Uh, you know, shout out to 9-11, but we all know, a lot of people know the real deal thing about that. Guys, be truthful with your people. Let them know what's up. I don't know about y'all, but this is what I do with my team. We'll get on a, we'll a three-way call, I'll write notes. And they need to speak up a little louder. Uh, you know, learn, work on edification, work on the intro. If you don't have your team's goals, if you don't have your team's 30-day goals, 60-day goals, 90-day goals, if you launch them, you're playing yourself. Because how are you going to expect to lead them to the promised land if you don't even know what they need, if you don't even know what they want, if you don't even need, you, if you don't even know where they're going? Like, you got to know where they're going. Like, my team, I don't look at them for, for who they are now or who they've been. As soon as they tell me their goals, oh, that's them. That's them. I got to do what I got to do to help them get there. So, number three. All right, I will dil diligently expect to be what I expect of others. So if you expect your team to be off the chain, hitting ranks, shut down the banks, getting pills, taking freaking trips, then you gotta be doing it. You gotta lead by example. Like they're looking at you, like, oh, man, I wanna be like that. So you gotta realize that your team is watching your every move. They're seeing what you're doing. Like when I was in Puerto Rico, I was journaling my trade still. I still was getting on the charts. I still was doing what I was doing. And one of my team members was like, you're reading. How, how do you retain all that? Don't worry about how I retain all that. This book is going to help me lead you to where you want to go. So you got to be lead, You got to be reading books. I don't know if you guys have been on that KT sauce. Oh, my God. Girl, the Savage put me on to that, man. This past year and a half, that shit been played in the shower. I play it in the car. I play that, man, everywhere, bro. It's like my theme song. Well, it ain't a song, but. It's my my go-to audio when I want to make sure that my vibrations is on point, like a pencil. But what Kevin Trudeau said, he said that leaders are readers, okay? So if you're going to lead people, you need to be absorbing information. You need to be reading things that you want to pass down to them and be like, all right, so I already read this. I'm going to be the walking example, but I want you to read this too so you can get 
where I've been. So you can understand where I've been and you don't have to be there, right? Because uh, trust me, the way the academy is now and the way our blueprint is set up now, you knew people are freaking, y'all are blessed <laughs> beyond measure. So let's get into number four. I will unleash, I will unshackle and, and be proud of my enthusiasm. Y'all, y'all see me, y'all see me in the chest, don't y'all? This is an example. I'm not here to just talk about me. It's about we, because I see you guys doing it too. It's the deal. Uh, my bad. I hope I said his name right. He was going him in the chats, and I love it when we all go him in the chats. But don't ever compress your enthusiasm because somebody else doesn't see your vision or understand where you're coming from. Or if you got buddies and friends, like, hey man, chill out, bro. You, why are you talking about these points? Why are you talking about these points? No, 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 no. no I'm not chilling now because this is a skill that you can do for the rest of your life. My chest. Feed your freaking family. Okay, Damon Perez, I'm going to have to go ahead and mute you too, my brother. But anyways, this is a skill set that can feed your family. So why would you take it lightly? I remember when I made my first $10 in the market, y'all. I was in my backyard running. I was like, right, let's go. You got to be hyped like that. You got to have that enthusiasm. So why would somebody want to join somebody that's like, yeah, I'm doing this thing. Part of IBM Master Academy, you see. Get to Puerto Rico, but it wasn't fun. No, 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 no. You gotta come with that energy. You gotta come with that energy. You gotta, you gotta make it seem like this is the greatest ticket in the world. This, how did I just to this day? I, I was just talking to my boy Malou. Shout out to him. We just signed up a new family member named Carlos from uh, Houston, and I'm on the call like, dude, how in the world is this 2:35? I've been doing this for a year and a half, and I'm still like, man. And sometimes I see different calls from different leaders, and I want to re-sign up. But anyways, number five, number five. I will search for some positive strengths in every person. I will expect each person's best. Guys, I analyze my team. <laughs> y'all can, can think it's crazy, whatever. I'm feel, I feel like I'm like Phil Jackson, okay? I don't want to just, I don't want to just beat Michael Jordan and score all the points. I want to lead you to championships. I want to lead you to ranks. I want to lead you to getting in pips. And like I always say, get pips, take trips. But anyways, uh, like for instance, you know, I, I just, like I said, I, I'll talk to my team one-on-one -on -one and I'll just tell them like, man, you're, you're good at this. You're good at that. We don't, don't worry about your team's weaknesses. I mean, obviously you want to make them your strengths, but really focus on the strengths because you guys probably have team members that you're probably limiting right now by not letting them get on calls or, or you're probably not putting in the position for them to get fed, for them to go to the next level. Right. But anyways, let's get on number six. Uh, I will share life. Love and laughter with my team. Guys, I'm laughing every day with you guys. Every single day. I'm having fun. But when it's time to get to business, I am I'm putting the LED glasses on. I'm going ham on the, on the charts. I'm going in, right? We can have a good time like we did in Puerto Rico. Uh, shout out to everybody that, that was there at my Airbnb Saturday. That, shit was, <laughs> that was amazing. But um, all right. So that's, that's uh, what number was that? have fun with you with your team you know at the end of the day <clears throat> number five okay i'll go back to number five number five is uh, i will search for some positive strengths in every person and i will expect each person's best right because i remember me being a kid man and <laughs> I remember my dad used to open up the bible like this <laughs> and he would tell us the commandments that's how i feel right now but I feel different because back then I ain't gonna lie to y'all. When he was telling me, I wasn't I wasn't coachable. I, I didn't I wasn't teachable. I got on the wall. My teacher uh, teachability index was low. And I hope hopefully this call makes your teachability uh, ability index high. And I want to let y'all know this commandments that I'm telling y'all. This is just the beginning. <laughs> I ain't even really I haven't even fried the nuggets. I ain't even put the nuggets in the dang bin. I haven't even prepared the nuggets yet. The nuggets is for, for <laughs> I'm gonna get to them. But anyways. So you guys got number five. Uh, do I need to go over number six again? I guess not. I guess not. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Number seven. I know that expectations are the key to all happening. So how do you expect your team to hit ranks? How do you expect them to get to the next level, but you're not giving them any type of expectations to hit? Because you got to have expectations to go to the next destination. Let's go. Okay, <laughs> let's get on to the next commandment. Um, but yeah, guys, feel free. You know, if, I, if I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. You know, I watched the, I was watching that movie called Turbo with my niece. That thing snail is fast. And that's how I want you guys to get to your desires in life. I want you to get to them as fast as possible. Because life is short. You know, it can end at any time. 
So, all right. So number eight, I know that the best control is a clearly and mutual, mutually understood expectation. You want me to say that again? Uh, number eight, I know that the best control is a clearly and mutually understood expectation. So in order for, for you and your team to be in control of each other, you guys got to have a mutual expectation for each other. Hold each other accountable and, and, and feel for each other. This is about building relationships, right? At the end of the day, if you're not willing to spend an hour a day calling your team, seeing how they're doing, then, then you're, not, you're not leadership material. And you may want to go shop and go work at McDonald's. I don't know what to tell you, but this is this is a cause that make you be a leader. This ain't even just for business either. This is for for all of you guys. Because if you guys pay two thirty five for the subscription for the subscription, you're already leading your family. You're already the first one breaking generational curses. You're already the first one that's gonna be the first millionaire in your family. If if you don't give up, let's go. All right. Uh, number nine. I will sculpt a vision and plan boldly. Guys, have depth of vision. You guys see a tree. Y'all might see an acorn. With me, I see forest. <laughs> That's how I'm with my team. That's how you gotta be. That's how you gotta be. I want you guys to be, like really think like that. I see my team for 20 years down the road. Shout out to Omar. I don't know if he's on this call or not, but shout out to Omar Rivera. We were talking in Puerto Rico and he was saying, man, he asked us a great question. He said, what do you guys, uh, where do you guys see yourself 20 years from now? And I am. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God, 20 years from now? <laughs> Nigga, I'm only going to be 44 years old. Dang. I probably won't even have grandkids yet. But anyways, um, he, he said something that was very profound. And it was like, wow, this man is going to change the, the world. <laughs> so basically, in 20 years, this man has depth the vision of having it's own our own city. It's basically where you know there's no fluoride in the food. We we do our own stuff. We got our own. We hire our own engineers. We got all the right people that are making a positive cause. I think there's like some type of country in Africa where it's like eight people start their own colony and community. Why can't QC do that? We can we can do that. Nobody's stopping us from doing that. But our own mind. That's gonna be the thing that's gonna stop most people to do anything. So let's get on down to uh, number ten. Number 10 for the win. Yeah, we back at it again. Uh, uh. Lord, forgive me for my sins. What? All right, number 10. I will live my plan and I will lead my team. Now, guys, if you write that down, really feel it, like really truly believe that in your heart. You know what I'm saying? Um, make sure your team is straight. Make sure your team is good. Because at the end of the day, that's how you're going to get paid the way you want to get paid. You get paid through value. And the way we get paid here is, is it's not like work. We're going, oh, I need calling me. Get my car. Drive to my job. Oh, man. Oh, this freaking traffic. God dang it. Then you go clock in. That's not how we do it here. That's not how we do it. We work 24-7 off the clock. You may have a team overseas. You may have a team in a, a different country. You want to get up. You want to provide for your team. They're going to be calling on you. Hey, you know, my broker, I don't know what's going on with my broker right now. Hey, and you got another person calling you. I ain't going to lie, bro, man. This trade stuff is getting tough. You got to be able to handle problems. You got to get to the point where your, your emotions do not get to you, guys. Be real. Man, let me, let me, can I be real? Man, drop, drop a three. Drop a three in the chat. I can be savage right now. Drop a three in the freaking chat. I'm feeling good today. I'm feeling wonderful. I'm feeling, I'm feeling blessed. I'm, I'm feeling like that, that energy is just flowing through me, guys. So Saturday, that was the convention. That was the party, right? But the whole time, I knew in the back of my mind, that was the one-year anniversary that my dad passed away. I sat there. I was like, oh, my God. I looked at Ronzel. He's in the front seat. You know, the rest of my team is in the back. I didn't tell, I didn't tell everybody on my team what was going on. I knew Ronzel could relate. Ronzel been there. He done that. He done it at a young age. Man, young soul shout to him. Yesterday, his car was off the chain. Hit that motherfucker out the park. Woo! Oh. But anyways, we're sitting in the van. I said, hey, bro, what, uh, what's the date? What's the date? He was like, uh, September 5th. Why? I said, damn. Said, what's going on? I said, man, that's the day my, my dad passed away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, don't worry about it. He's like, he's like, oh, sorry about that. But I said, bro, Look, I'm good. <laughs> We're going to the convention. We're going to have a good time. You know what I'm saying? And I use his energy to, to lead me through life. But anyways, all right, guys. I would have y'all draw a circle like this. <laughs> but you ain't got to. You can just put, like, one and then put the, 
the actual like leadership quote and then put the actual declaration under it. Cause these are, these are like affirmations guys. This is going to be a part of you. If you write this shit down, you know, you have over, I think it's like 10,000 kinetic movements in your hands. So when you're writing it down, you're tangibly put in the universe. You're also engraving it into your heuristic patterns in inside your brain. But anyways, put on top of your paper below those last 10 commandments, the cybernetic cycle of leadership, because this is a, this is a mental battle. God, you know, Alexander the great, he was a great commander. He had to go and fight and go into war. I'll be feeling like him sometimes. But one thing that, that made him so freaking great was his mentality. Who's another uh, leader? Um, Harriet Tubman. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This woman went up north to free the slaves and went all the way back down to the south to get some more people. What is your excuse to not hit rights? What is your excuse to go out here and talk to people do, uh, look, I don't want to be like 80, 90 years old. Like, damn, I could, if I would have talked to at least like, like 100 more people, I probably would have been chairman 500. God dang, now I'm over here broke down, got a cane. I don't want to feel like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So seize the moment. You see somebody you want to talk to, hey, shake your hands, get to it. But anyways, let's get to these leadership. Let's get to this. So the cybernetic cycle of leadership, number one, clarify purpose and direction. All right? So... Make sure when they, they tell you, your team tells you their purpose, make it clear and give them a direction. Show them, hey, look, we got Mike Never Red Tate, educator on a $250 million educational platform. I think, I think it's like a billion dollars. I don't know the whole numbers, guys. Like, I know that we, we up there. We on Forbes this, baby. That's all I know. But anyways, you could be like, look, we got Mike Never Red. He done this. He's been doing it for four years. Basically, just paint the freaking vision every single day. Let them know that this is a motherfucking gold ticket, not from Willy Wonka chocolate fetch, but from Chris Terry's pocket. God dang. All right, number two. Number two, ask, listen, and hear. Ask, listen, and hear. Didn't say ask, talk, 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 and listen and then hear. It said ask, listen, and hear. The reason why you want to ask your team questions and listen to them hear what they saying because they got real deal problems in their life. We all got them. We all go through shit, right? But you listening to them and then maybe like two weeks later, like, uh, like, bro, uh, I remember you telling me you was going through this with your mom. Like, how's your mom doing? That's going to make your team be like, damn, damn, my leader really cares about me, really cares about what's going on in my family. And that's how you guys got to feel. We got, man, shout out to y'all, 44 people on the call. Let's go. I see, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I see, uh, 4,444 on the call, honestly, right now, depth of vision. All right, number three. Uh, number three is enable involvement and participation. Look, let your team get on calls and talk. <laughs> Allow them to be the ones on the flyers. And also, let them know, hey, you're going to have to participate. This is like Gold's Gym. They give you a little scanner, you go in the gym, bing, you clock in every day, right? The same thing for this. Zoom is that scanner. Get on the Zooms, you know, make sure your team know they got to participate to recipitate <laughs> the income they want and need. All right, number four, um, set clear expectations and goals, which is self-explanatory. I ain't going to go all into that, but just you guys know. Be freaking clear because at the end of the day, this is business. It just happens to feel like a family. So you don't want, you wouldn't want your mama or your sister or somebody that's quote unquote family that you claim that you love to um, not have uh, the, the right goals and the clear expectation on where we're going with this, baby. Because we go, QC's gonna have like 5,000 members by the end of this year. I already know it. All right, guys. Uh, number five, provide consistent interaction. So what that means is call your team, interact with them, have events. Have cookouts, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my vegans. We can make some vegan burgers or something. I'm, you know, let's just go out, have fun together, um, and just be consistent. Understand that, you know, communication changes the situations. Communication is business. If you guys aren't talking back and forth, man, this phone, your phone, your phone bill should be going off the hook, <laughs> off the hook. If you, I'm sorry for people that want to pay fifty dollars a month, but you may have to up that. You may have to add some more calls. You may have to add a new package where you can get more minutes. But you need to be talking to your team. Um, number six, affirm and optimize strengths. So you know that somebody on your team is good at promoting. Optimize that. Hey, bro, I need you to promote the next event, bro. You're so good at promoting. Or 
Girl, a hey, girl, I ain't gonna lie to you, girl. That last event that you put on it, damn, we had about fucking thirty boss ladies come man, Let's go. Uh, this book is uh, Tough Minded Leadership by Joe D. Batten. Oh, oh my God, Brady, you order this book right here. It, this this book literally vibrates on my desk. <laughs> Every time I read this, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is why CEOs make so much money because the way that they break their stuff down, the way they have their rules and guidelines. Guys, this is not $253 or $235. My bad, I'm over adding bounce back to it. Might as well add that to bounce back to our strengths. But guys, treat this like a million dollar business. Billion dollar business. All right, number seven, establish measurements. So how in the world are you gonna get somewhere if you ain't even measuring how many people you've been talking to a day? If you ain't even writing down your journal, man, shout out to everybody. Who, where my journal at? Shout out to everybody that got a, a trading journal. How are you gonna know? How the hell are you gonna know how to duplicate what you got <laughs> if you're not measuring it? If you don't know, okay, this week I have 500 pips, this week I have five percent, ten percent. What book? Tough-Minded Leadership by Joe Batten. Jody Batten, man. I don't know. I might have to put that in the chat real quick because I, I feel like once you guys get this book, y'all about to be some complete savages. They just not going to recognize you no more. You're going to be like, oh, it's time to get to business. Oh, my God. Because, man, it, it definitely leveled me up. Um, I feel like um, I feel like Bruce Lee with business now. Like, <laughs> I fear not the man that practiced 10,000 kicks, but practiced one 10,000 times, baby. All right, uh, so where are we at? Number eight, all right, monitor performance. It, it basically goes with uh, establishing measurements, monitor your performance. Uh, so I don't wanna go into detail with that. Number nine, provide a developmental counsel. So basically you need to be the person that can, can provide tools for your teams to develop. Send them videos, send them books, call them up. Hey man, I ain't gonna lie. Man, Matt Rosa, I don't think he was on that call. I don't know if he was. Man, he, he said this and that, and dude, oh my God. That right there is going to help with the development because obviously Matt Rosa is one of the top leaders in the company. So provide, provide value. Number 10, establish accountability. I don't know if you guys do accountability calls. Uh, my team, we do our accountability calls every Sunday at one o'clock. Hold them accountable, okay? Make sure they understand like, oh, if I don't get this done this week. Oh my God, man, my mentor going to get on my ass. You might have to do that, right? Uh, I remember, what's his name? Um, the Owens guy, Jesse Owens. Yeah, Jesse Owens, the chairman. He was talking about his mentor was like, hey, you might want to put a little DR on and put it. Like, you, you got you to gotta hold him accountable for everything. Um, I was reading this book called uh, Leadership by John Wooden. This is another one. This is another book I, I, I get nuggets from as far as leadership. This man was so obsessed with his team that he made his team fold their socks a certain way. They had to wear their shoes and tie their shoes a certain way. They were so down to the details to be so precise. And that's the reason why that man won like 11 national championships in 13 years, 11 in a row. <laughs> this savage ass uh, coach. And, and I, I love just reading stuff like that. But um, number 11, make tough minded decisions. All right. Tough minded decisions. Uh, it may be hard. You know, <laughs> somebody may be like, Hey, I, I don't, man, I don't know uh, what to do. Uh, I lost my dog, my cat. Um, I lost my feathers. I'm crying. Can you come over here? Don't, don't mind going over to your team, you know what I'm saying, helping them out. I remember I went to Ron Zell's house a couple, <laughs> couple months ago. <laughs> I did not want to do it. I ain't going to lie to you. I did not want to do it. But just me feeling like, okay, I'm a brother. I feel like I'm obligated to help him out. I'm, I'm obligated to go and do this. So I live on the other side of Nashville. He live on the other side. I'm on the west side. He, I'm on the east side. So I had to drive down there 45 minutes, but I, I appreciated it, though. Got there. I'm helping him move. I'm sweating. I'm like, God damn. I'm out here in a hot ass sun. I'm like, oh, shit. That washing and dry was heavy, bro. We're over here, hands hurting and everything. I'm like, Ron's like, hey, bro, you want to take a break? Yeah, bro. Hold on, hold on. Sit down. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> then we pick it back up. We take it. Put it on the U. Oh, oh. oh shoot. What? As the whole time, I'm building, I'm building a relationship with my guy. I'm letting him know, hey, brother, I got you. You got me. Hey, um, you, I eat, you eat. Uh, did I get to number 12? Oh, yeah, number 12, expect excellence. Like, come on. Hey, uh, <laughs> if somebody on your team is kind of like slacking and you know they're usually excellent at a certain, or a certain thing or they're consistent at it, like, for instance, I don't know why I keep it on Ron's Hill, but he's just on top of my head right now. 
bro, if you ever get off of your swag stuff, if your swag is not on point, I'm like, bro, hold on now. We expect excellence here. Your, 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 your swag, this is, is excellence. Jordan Higgins, if we ever drop a beat and your ass is dancing, bro, I'm going to be like, hey, bro, hey, I don't know what happened to your dancing when we was in Puerto Rico, bro, but you got to fix that because you know you can do better. Because at the end of the day, hey, we're here to help each other become better men and better women. All right, so now, since you got those 12 uh, cybernetic cycles of leadership, there's a declaration at the bottom of these to, to basically affirm to you that you're going to give your 110% to your freaking team, okay? Number one, this goes with the clar uh, clarity, purpose, and direction. This is, the do this is the declaration. So put this up under them. Number one, I will ensure that my organization, my team members, and I develop clear feelings of purpose and direction. Say that to yourself because you got to affirm it and you got you to gotta affirm with your team. Um, you may have to make them write notes on me. <laughs> Give them this book. This book was like $17. It's, it's, it's off the chain. Number two is for ask, listen, and hear. This is a declaration for that. I will ask, listen to, and hear my colleagues to best understand and use their strengths. You will never know their strengths and weaknesses if you're not listening. God gave you two ears and one mouth. Use them proportionately, okay? So use them to your best advantage, okay? All right, number three, this goes with enable involvement and participation. I will ensure that they feel a sense of involvement, participation, identification uh, with our goals and objectives. So if somebody is a three-figure day, you need to celebrate. If somebody is a four-figure day, you need to celebrate. Two and three, good for me. <laughs> P150, we're not empty. You got you to gotta celebrate all that stuff because that's where it starts. Our mentors say that what you, what you celebrate accelerates. And I've noticed that. It's like for there was, there was a time where I was in a stuck. I was stuck. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, damn, I'm a lost boss of my team. I'm deranged. I don't know what to do. That's what I started doing. I started posting everybody, celebrating everybody, posting everybody. Next thing you know, I'm on the flyer. Like, what the fuck? Is this how it works? Yes, that's how it works. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to number four. Uh, set clear expectations. This is the declaration for number four on set, set clear expectations and goals. I will ensure that all my members of the team know clearly what results expectations justify their place in the organization. I know this sounds like too simple. I know it sounds too corporate. It sounds too tough minded, but dude, whenever your team is coming at you and they're talking about, oh, I don't know if I can pay the subscription. Oh, my parents, they got, they got this stuff going on with their doctor bills. Oh, or whenever you, your money come in and you look at your bank account like, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna pay this rent. You wanna, you're gonna wanna go back to this. You wanna, you wanna make sure your team gets fed because if you, you feed your team, you'll get fed in return. It's called lead, it's called lead, it's called lead, right? So keep chopping away at what you do. So number five, this is for uh, provide consistent interaction. Uh, I will provide consistent information, encourage sharing and coordination. Dude, share a book with your team, right? Hey, y'all, I just, I just bought silver. I just bought Bitcoin. I'm looking at Chainlink. Uh, y'all, y'all see? Hey, y'all see Euro USD? Hey, man, I'm about to hop on the bounce back because when you do that, and if they're looking at you like, hey, um, this is my mentor, this is the person that I look up to, you gotta lead. You gotta lead by example. You don't, you don't see, uh, you don't see Michael Jordan uh, backing down for what he got to do for his team. I heard, actually, I was reading the book Relentless, and Tim Grover is a phenomenal trainer. How he trained Michael Jordan for 15 damn years. I knew that. Oh, oh, just imagine that 15 years with the greatest basketball player of all time. I said, I love Kobe to death, but Jordan's the man, just because I read this book. Michael Jordan would take his time out of his day, he wasn't too good to do this, and go put up every single basketball. And he would put up all the equipment while all the team players would go and get in the shower and, and popping bottles or whatever they're doing after practice, whatever they're doing after games, this man was going to get the dang game ball, getting all the balls, getting everything round up because he wasn't too good to do the little things. All right, um, let's see. Number six, this was for affirm and optimize strengths. I will pr proceed at all times on the belief that our strengths are our, our tools. So, look, guys, I got a tool belt for my team. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> you're good at promoting. 
Hey, pull out the hammer on the ass. All right, you good at uh, prospecting. Pull out the wrench. All right, let's go. Hey, you're good at uh, presenting. We need that screwdriver you got. We need you to get to work. <laughs> we need you to get to work. Um, number seven, this was the declaration for established measurements. I will ensure that specific qualitative and quantitative performance indicators are developed. So, guys, you got to have... I ain't talking about indicators on the diagram chart. Take them trend lines somewhere else. Take them somewhere else. <laughs> RSI is not good for my eye. <laughs> but you got to have some type of, you need to know your team, basically. You need to know when they're, they're slipping. Like, oh, man, right. They ain't in the chat right now. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know. Something is up. I can just feel it. You got to be one. We got to move as a unit. I don't know if y'all see my story on Instagram. So in my apartment, I like to go outside and sit in nature. And I'm seeing all these ducks. There's one, there's one at the head. There's a whole bunch of ducks that move in beautiful. And I said, God damn, look at that beautiful this. Excuse my language. Sometimes I do drop some cuss words here and there. But I was like, oh my God, look at these ducks. They're moving in unison. They're moving together. I said, that's QC when we go on trips. All right. So number eight, this stands for monitor performance. Look at this. Look at this. We went from 44 people on the call and we lost we lost like five people. That's people that don't want to get to the next level. That's people that can't can't sit there and understand that this is this is true stuff that you need to get to the next level. It's okay though. It's okay though. Miss out on the nugget. Number eight, I will ensure that I receive and provide lean and clean and timely progress reports. Oh my God, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'll just be 100. I'm transparent as that could be. <laughs> I'm not gonna do a progress report on the team, but I will track their progress. I'm not gonna be like, hey, you got an L. You didn't show up to this many calls. You didn't do that. No, I'm not gonna do that. This is not school. This is not school. But I will make sure I do understand like, okay, this person is, is, is doing this, this person's doing that to make sure they're straight. All right, let's go. Let's go on to number nine. This is, was the declaration to provide developmental counsel. So I will ensure that each member on my team is provided with excellent counsel to optimize growth and performance. So you need to make sure your team is ready for performance. Do you ever, do you see the, the New England Patriots? Do you see Los Angeles Lakers? Do you see Lionel Messi getting on the daggone field without him knowing that he's 100% right? You may have a teammate that's injured. You may have a teammate that's going through something. Are you going to, are you going to be the one to, to be there with them to help them get to optimize performance? You're going to help them to get to the next freaking level. Let's go. You ever heard of outwin the devil? If you haven't read, haven't read that book, you haven't listened to the audio, you know, when the devil voice goes like that, I ain't gonna lie. I'm looking like it. Cause it's like, it just makes me have that picture in my mind of what it is. But same thing with this, you got to help your team out with the freaking devil. You got to help them do what they got to do. Because guess what? Their, their family members are going to come at them. Hey, that's a scam. That's a pyramid scheme. you got to help them object that. Uh, and you just got to be there for them. Uh, let's see. Number 10. This was the declaration to establish accountability. So I will establish both the mechanics and dynamics needed to reward performance or correct failure. So look, you see your team, <laughs> you see your team slipping. Hey, look, bro. This is, you paid 235 brother, but... You're not acting like you you want a million dollars. You're not acting like a seven-figure earner. You're not acting like you really want this. Be straight up. All right. Uh, number 11. Also, if you oh, let me go back to number 10. If your team fails, help them correct their fails. Understand where they come from. My team, I don't tell them not to see no profit. I don't want to see all that. Show me your chart. I want to see what you, where did you enter at? Why did, why did you get clapped? <laughs> like, what is going on with you, brother? What's going on with your sis? That's what you got to actually like look into what's going on with them and that can help them. Number 11, this was a declaration to make tough minded decisions. You got to be tough. You got to put on that armor like a gladiator, baby. This ain't the 19 or the 1600s when we had a spear niggas and nothing like that. But we're going into battle every day. We're going out here on a mission, on a grind to go out and help as many people as we can and put them in the QC so they can feed their families for a lifetime. All right. So uh, number 11, I will make decisions and solve problems when and where circumstances require. Let me say that again. I will make decisions and solve problems when and where circumstances are required. So look, if you ain't got all the answers, uh, that's okay. Get somebody else that can handle those answers or ha handle those uh, questions that they have um, and change that situation or that circumstances going on with them. 
Um, all right, number 12. Number 12 was expect excellent. Ooh. Do you think that Mark Cuban, the Dallas Mavericks owner, is not expecting that gum Luka Doncic to come out there and be excellent? They don't get paid millions of dollars for that. It's just like this. This is a profession. This is a multi dude. Network market is a $163 billion industry. All of us could be in here getting yachts, getting paid, getting what we want at the end of the day. But it's up to you. All right. Sorry about that. I can't see it. It sounds like Jason Derulo, but I can't see it. Number 12, expect excellence. So number 12 would be it. For your declaration, I will expect the best from myself and my team at all times. Everybody got those. All right. So I'm, I'm glad that I could give you guys that value right there. Um, before I leave you guys, I want to just I just want to just express myself on how I'm grateful for every single one of you guys for getting on this call, how I'm thankful for freaking PR. Hopefully we get to go to Costa Rica because we shut down the whole island. Um, hopefully these nuggets are something you can go and run with and be like, yes, that helped me go through a breakthrough. Yes, I'm one step closer to that rank. Yes, I'm one step closer to the time I'm on. Yes, I'm one step closer to that dang training account that I want. So, guys, uh, um, Noah, I'll, see, I'll send you the decorations, but I'll probably send you the picture of the book, the whole decoration. You can go ahead and copy them or whatever. But anyways, guys, that's all I got right now. I appreciate every single one of you guys. So get up right now. Put that armor on your freaking chest. Put your helmet on. You got what you need to go out here and to feed your team, to get to the next level, to be a chairwoman, to be a chairman. Take these notes. It's tough-minded leadership. Be tough-minded because this world does not want to see you succeed. There's so much stuff going on. Your family probably don't believe in you. Your friends probably don't believe in you. But I want to see you keep going anyway because we're all three feet from gold. So keep on plugging away, and I'll see you guys soon. Y'all have a good one. God bless every single every one of y'all guys. Let's go!